And here's some more. You support others, you outsmart hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, eat Smarties. Eat an early supper, if you can. Use time-restricted eating in the evening. That is, don't be eating a whole bunch of snacks in the evening. Take a power nap sometime during the day. And it could just be 20 minutes. Use the glycemic index for carbs, for carbohydrates. And we've already kind of gotten into that a little bit with the whole foods there. So here, here it is. Let's look at this one. How do we eat? The table is set and it's ready. The, the food is ready to eat. Twelve hungry brothers sit at the table ready to eat. Mom brings the food and sets it before them. The food is limited and these guys are famished. Can you picture the scene? The only thing you hear is the chopping of teeth. And how long will it take for them to clean their plates? I can imagine asking for dessert in five minutes. When you sit down to eat, you're not sitting with 11 hungry brothers, are you? Are you? Yet it's so easy to, to fall into the trap of devouring food without even tasting it. Okay, so we're watching our little, our son's little, two little dogs. We've got a Boston Terrier. He's got a Boston Terrier and a French Bulldog. And the little French Bulldog, boy, he gets so enthusiastic about eating his food. And we have to put him in a different room because, you know why? He chows down on it so quickly. He'll come out to the other two dogs' bowls, and they're still eating. And, of course, what do you think he wants to do? Take over. And so we've got this little, uh, little door in the utility room there, and you just kind of, you don't shut it all the way. And I put the dish down there for him and then call him. And guess what, boy, here he comes strutting and he'll bang his head right into that door and open it up and then I shut it on him because he devours the food, just devours it. But you know, some people, it seems like some people do that same thing. Now, can you imagine this? Imagine a tiger is chasing you and you're running for your life and a sharp, deep cliff confronts you and you have no place to go. The tiger is getting so close, you can feel him breathing down your neck. Then you notice a rope. It's dangling over the cliff and you grab it. And holding onto the rope for your life, you sway dangling from the cliff. The tiger roars above and 500 feet below, sharp jagged rocks invite you to fall. And then you notice two mice Where'd they come from? They came out and they're chewing on the rope above you. What should you do? Well, you begin to look on the ledge there. You got the tiger above, the rocks below, and the rope is about to break. And just then you notice some delicious looking bright red, ripe strawberries growing on the side of the cliff. And you stretch out one hand, pluck a strawberry pop it into your mouth and the strawberry is so sweet and refreshing you think delicious that's the best strawberry I've ever tasted and if you were still occupied with the tiger above or the sharp rocks below you would have never tasted and enjoyed the strawberries we call this the precious present and when we eat are we focusing on the smell, the texture, the color, and the rich taste of the food we're eating? Uh, the way some people eat, they don't have time to do that, do they? They just gulp that thing down. Well, there's an interesting, uh, you know, I'm asking, well, why are, why are you eating so quickly? I say, well, I've always enjoyed my food and I may eat fast, but it's often because, well, actually, I've never thought about why I eat fast, but it doesn't really matter. Really? It doesn't really matter? Those who are patient have great understanding. Now, I don't know how many times you've heard it applied, that a, pat, a proverb like that applied to eating. Wouldn't patience apply to eating? Yeah. 
Sure it would, and I can apply it in many other areas of life too. Why wait? This was a program at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center, and uh, they taught several things there, but one of the things is your eating pace. And here's just an example, an interview with the person. You know, you're driven by your own desire, but they give you the tools to accomplish your objectives. Simple tools, like learning proper portion sizes and eating at a slower pace. One night you have us chew on a single dried cranberry for five minutes. That shows you how you can enjoy food without gulping it all down while it's up here. Wow. You needed patience for that one, didn't you? Love to eat. How to eat and not gain weight. Another little short video here that really is instructive. So let's watch this. Do you love to eat? Many people complain that they love to eat and that's why they're overweight. But let me tell you a story about an overweight friend of mine who exemplifies this statement. I invited my friend Madeline to dinner and made homemade garlic bread. It was warm, out of the oven, crunchy, with the aroma of garlic wafting all around the dining room. Yes, it was delicious. And Madeline looked at the bread and practically inhaled it. It seemed like before she even finished chewing the first piece, she was grabbing for the second. And she always told me that the reason she was constantly battling her weight was because Madeline loved eating. But I realized that she wasn't eating like someone who enjoyed her food. She wasn't even tasting it. You don't taste food in your stomach. That's the job of your tongue and nose. So if you don't take the time and practice mindful attention to the food in your mouth, you're not getting the pleasure of the taste. People who eat fast, multitask, which is talking, reading, watching TV, or I am it, don't get the joy of food, and they tend to over it. They are also not focused on the feeling of fullness in their stomach and end up eating too much. If you eat slower, mindfully, and put less food on a smaller dish, you will enjoy your food and realize you're full and actually end up eating about 20% less without dieting. This can translate into a half pound a week without dieting, exercise, starvation, or avoiding any food you like. That's 12 pounds a year without dieting. It's that simple. Just slow down. So I put it this way, slow down your fork. Allow the feel full signal to kick in. It takes about 20 minutes. That is, if you're getting the adequate amount of sleep and you got enough ghrelin, the hunger hormone, it's balanced with the leptin, the feel full hormone, which is produced, by the way, in the adipose, the fat cells. Man, I didn't know anything that valuable come from the fat, but there is. That's where those hormones come from in the body. But uh, all of this works when we combine it with getting the proper amount of sleep. We get the hormones working correctly, and we're taking our time and uh, pace yourself with the slowest eater at the table. Well, who's that? Well, that's my wife at my table. <laughs> now, it used to be when I go visit my parents, my mother was the slowest eater I think I've ever seen. It was too difficult for me to pace myself with her. But uh, boy, you can, really, you can really slow down with some people. Now, I don't know what it is. Maybe they are really tasting and enjoying their food. That's amazing. It's a wonderful little blessing, isn't it? That we can enjoy, we just do that. Okay, so that was uh, all we're gonna look at tonight. Next week, we're gonna, next week, next month, we're gonna look at salads. That's where we're gonna start. Different tools and supporting, uh, yeah, supporting others. And I'm real thankful that some of you have been able to tell others about this meeting and to have them come. Or you can tell them about, uh, I've got all these videos 
at Wisdom for Diabetes YouTube uh, channel. And after I have this, I'll have about 24 lessons on there. I'm probably going to make three lessons out of this tonight. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you can tell others about it. In fact, I'll bring a sheet where you can pass that out to someone. They want to look at them. 